Hello, I'm Jacob Freund from Camunda and today I would like to demonstrate the idea behind the Camunda BPM platform. So let's start by explaining why Camunda is not a typical BPM suite. Typical BPM suites are standard software products for process automation. You buy the software and it normally works, but you don't know anything about the implementation details because it's closed source and therefore a black box. Now that's okay for typical end-user tools like CRM systems. But a process engine is actually part of your IT infrastructure. It's not a tool, but a runtime component. So the trouble often starts when you try to integrate the black box BPM suite with your individual IT infrastructure. It's just a foreign object. The next issue concerns the people actually implementing your process applications. They're software developers and therefore used to common programming languages like Java, C Sharp or whatever. But now they have to learn the vendor-specific way of application development. This will take time and slows you down and your developers will forget what they have learned as soon as the process is implemented. Some BPM suite vendors claim that you won't need your developers anymore because now your business users can implement their processes themselves. Go, give it a try, but you will find out the hard way that this may work for prototyping and simple workflows, but not for real-world process applications. So what's different about Camunda? Well, it's not a BPM suite, but a BPM framework implemented in Java and not only based on open source, but delivered including the source code. Because it's completely open, you can easily embed it in your technical infrastructure. And because it's all Java, your software developers can start implementing right away. Of course, here's also the catch. If you don't have any Java developers, you shouldn't use Camunda. But if you do, there's nothing better for process automation. Now you may wonder, okay, I see, but the B in BPM stands for business. So what about the business in your approach? This is where BPMN comes into the play. Camunda contains a BPMN 2.0 process engine. And as you may know, BPMN can also act as a common language between business and IT. Now to get this working, one important aspect is the toolchain. The Java developers are working with the environment they are used to, mostly Eclipse. So this is why we provide a BPMN plugin for Eclipse. On the other hand, business analysts don't have to use it. They can work in any BPMN 2.0 compliant model, as long as correctly X and imports BPMN 2.0 XML. Now let me demonstrate this round trip with a typical modeler called Signavio. Okay, so let's just create a simple process diagram. Um, let me just draw a pool, which I call my process. Um, and let's have a start event. Let's have a simple task, do something, and an end event. Um, I think I will specify the do something task as a user task. And that's about it. I don't know, I think I will call it Jacob. Um, so this is how um, I would, as a business analyst, create a BPMN diagram. I can actually discuss with my business users and so on. So now I would like to um, hand this diagram over to the software developers, um, which is why I will switch now to a tool called uh, Camunda Cycle. And with Cycle I can actually create um, a round trip which, I, which is also called Jacob. And we have two areas here. The left one is dedicated to um, my, my business model, and the, the right one is dedicated to the designer, which is actually the BPMN plugin for Eclipse. So I will now um, add uh, a process model to my round trip. That um, model is um, located in Signavio. Um, I'm now connecting to um, the Signavio as a service instance um, and I will just add the diagram I've just created here and um, I will now create um, the BPMN2 XML um, for, my, for my software developers which is why I hit the create button here and I can now choose a connector I will just choose the local file system for this demo um, normally uh, we also have subversion connectors things like that and I will create that BPMN2 file in my workspace, in my Eclipse project, in the sources folder. 
Okay, so that just happened. Of course, um, the two of them are in sync right now. Um, I will switch to my Eclipse and refresh. And here we are. So I can open that BPMN20 file in um, my Eclipse plugin right now. So this is my environment I'm used to as a Java developer. Um, well, I could now um, enhance, of course, my diagram. I could, uh, for instance, um, I don't know, let's let's name an SNE, so it's Kermit who will actually um, complete that task, and there's a form called uh, something or whatever. So I will now um, enrich the process model with my um, execution attributes. Uh, what I could also do is I could, um, let's, let's delete this here and let's add a, a service task. Um, and I could now, I don't know, if I, if I want to, I could also specify the Java class um, that is needed here um, for, for the service implementation or whatever. Actually, it's not, not so important right now, but um, that's how I would actually, um, actually uh, uh, tweak the, the BPMN model to make it executable. Um, now the interesting part is now to get that um, that adjusted model back into the environment of my business analyst. So um, right now we have only seen the forward engineering. We will now see the reverse engineering. I've just saved it. Um, normally I would commit it now to my subversion or whatever, but now I've just saved it um, to my local drive, and I will now. Um, switch back to, to cycle um, and as we can see here we have the, the change BPMN diagram and we have also the information that this has changed uh, since the last sync. So um, now let's sync it back to Cygnavi. I will just hit the sync button and it's now connecting to the as a service instance of Cygnavio and um, just um, push the, the new BPMN to XML into that diagram right here. So um, what I could also do right now is I could um, make use of the uh, possibility to compare revision, revisions in Cygnavio so I can actually see the changes um, the software developers have made to my process diagram. For instance, um, they have deleted the end event here and um, added a new one over here and they've also added a service task um, right here. Um, so this makes it definitely easier to um, um, to, to learn what has actually been changed um, in the process diagram for execution purposes. Um, of course, I could also I could also edit um, the diagram now myself again. Um, I don't know. Let's let's just assume we want to to add um, one more one more task here. I could do that like this. Um, it's just a test. Let's save it. So um, when I now hit the refresh button here in Cycle, we not only see the new preview of, of the diagram right here, um, we also see that it has changed, of course, since the last sync. So I can now um, get that back into my, my development environment. So I will hit this button here. And um, now, of course, the BPMN20 file is actually overwritten on my local storage. But um, what is important um, now here is that we not only have the, the new diagram or the, the, the change diagram, we also still have the technical execution attributes I have, um, I have added the last time, so they are not lost. This is a fully working BPMN20 round trip based on the BPMN20 XML standard. Because Akamunda uh, natively executes BPMN20 XML, we can also use the BPMN diagrams for visualizing certain runtime information, like the number of process instances currently waiting at a certain task. Or we could also have a look at a single process instance, like in here, and we could, um, for instance, see which tasks have been um, passed or at which tasks we are currently waiting in the process. We could also have a look at certain historical information that um, have been tracked for the process instance. Um, right here I'm using um, one approach like Java Server Faces and jQuery, but I could also use a completely different UI technology. It's completely free to choose because it's still, um, it's still open. 
Um, this diagram here um, is from Segnavio, but um, we can also um, we can also realize um, that kind of, of visualization with any other BPMN 2.0 compliant um, tool, like for instance Ibo Prometheus or BOC Adonis or um, Visual Paradigm or Sparks Enterprise Architect or the open source Yao Qiang modeler or the Visio add-on provided by Trisotech. So this is what BPMN is all about in our opinion. It's not about um, getting rid of your programmers by some, some magical wizard based uh, process application development. It's all about communication. It's about getting an understanding of the business process that both business and IT can share.